sedimentary structures. During this mini lecture, we're going to look at some of the features that form as sediment is being deposited, but before it is lithified to form sedimentary rocks. Often these features can help provide clues to determine how sediment was being transported and how it was being deposited, as well as the environment that might have existed during deposition. The first sedimentary structure is known as bedding or bedding planes. What this is, is essentially a series of visible layers within sedimentary rock, where each bed is horizontal to one another. In fact, this is a key principle in geology known as the principle of original horizontality. What this means is most water-laid sediment is deposited in horizontal or near horizontal layers that are essentially parallel to Earth's surface, and each new successive layer varies the previous layer, much like a layered cake. In fact, this is often called layered cake geology. Another key principle in geology related to original horizontality is the principle of superposition, where the oldest layer is on the bottom and layers become increasingly younger as you move upwards. A special type of bedding that is not horizontal is known as cross bedding. Cross bedding forms as sediment is being transported by wind or water and is deposited on steep down slopes of dunes or sediment bars. These series of incline layers build outwards down direction from the current. For example, in this image, you can see the cross beds are inclined to the left, indicating that current direction was from right to left in the photograph. Similarly, in this image, the cross beds are also inclined to the left, indicating current direction from right to left. Notice in this image, our cross beds are inclined in the opposite direction, to the right, indicating current flow from left to right. Although cross beds are most commonly found in sedimentary rocks, sometimes they can be preserved in metamorphic rocks, such as here, where cross beds have been preserved in a quartzite. Another type of sedimentary structure that is often found in beds of sedimentary rock is known as graded bedding. In graded bedding, there is a vertical change in the sedimentary particle size. Typically, coarse grains at the bottom, progressively finding upwards to more fine grain towards the top. This forms as sediment is being deposited by a gradually slowing current, or as a river or stream current begins to slow down, more coarse grain particles are deposited first, followed by the more fine grain second. Ripple marks are a sedimentary feature that forms on the surface of a sediment layer by a moving current, typically wind or water. These features are ridges that form perpendicular to the motion of the current. In this image, you can see sand sized particles being transported by wind, forming these ridges perpendicular to the current direction. Wave caused ripple marks are formed from alternating current where the wave runs up the beach and then runs down the beach. This back and forth motion creates a ridge with symmetric sides. We call this symmetric ripple marks. If this sediment is quickly buried and then lithified, these symmetric ripple marks can be preserved on the top of the bedding plane, as shown in this photograph. Asymmetric ridges form when you have one dominant current direction. These are ridges with a steeper side on the down current direction and a more shallow side on the up current direction. In this photograph is an example of asymmetric ripple marks from a sand dune in Morocco. The current direction, or wind direction, is predominantly from left to right in the photograph. On the windward side of the ripple mark is a much shallower slope shown here, versus the downwind direction is a much more steep slope shown here. Asymmetric ripple marks can also be buried and preserved on bedding planes in the rock record. The nice thing about these type of ripple marks is that you can determine current direction because of that asymmetric ridge shape. The steep slope of these ripples indicate the down current direction. 
Another type of sedimentary structure that forms on the surface of bedding planes are what are known as mud cracks. Mud cracks form in sediment that is rich in clay. Typically these clays are deposited when wet, so at the bottom of a lake or in a flood plain or in a deep marine environment, and then are exposed to the air or above water and dry. As these sediments dry, the clay shrinks and cracks in these polygonal patterns or these polygonal-like shapes. This mud can then lithify to form shale where these mud cracks are then preserved, as seen in this photograph here. A number of other sedimentary structures can form on the surface of bedding planes. For example, here you can see raindrop impressions, where raindrops have fallen on sand. If this were to be lithified, these raindrop impressions would be recorded in the rock record. Other ways include sticks or small rocks being tumbled or dragged across the surface of a bed, and these small grooves or scratches, sometimes called tool marks, can be preserved as well. Although not sedimentary structures, fossils are extremely useful in determining the environment of deposition for sediments. Fossils simply are traces of plants or animals that are preserved in the rock record, typically found in sedimentary rock. Most often this is the hardest part of organisms that are most likely to be fossilized, such as their bone or shell, often where the original bone or shell has been replaced by another mineral, such as calcite or silica. Rarely is the fossil preserved unaltered. For example, in this photograph is a fossilized sequoia stump at Florissant Fossil Beds in Colorado. This is not the original wood material. All of this has been completely replaced by silica. In some cases, the original material completely dissolves away and leaves an opening or a void space which may be filled later by silica or calcite from groundwater. In this image here you can see what's called a root cast where the original roots are no longer there but the void space left behind when they dissolved away has been replaced by calcite. Another example here shows a root cast of a yucca plant. In some cases the void space is filled with sediment. In this example here, an ammonite, a small marine organism, has dissolved away and the space is filled in with sediment and the impression of the ammonite is left. Trace fossils are a unique type of fossil where the actual organism is not preserved. Instead, what is preserved is a trace of the organism's activity. For example, in this photograph, we see the trace footprints of an Alaskan brown bear. The actual bear has not been preserved, only its footprints as it walked across this mud. Likewise, here in this photograph, we see trace footprints of an animal along a riverbank. In this case, I know that it's a raccoon, and can see that it had spent quite a bit of time walking around on the riverbank. If this sediment is preserved, these traces or footprints can also be recorded in the rock record. Here we see the trace footprint of a three-toed dinosaur. Zooming out, you can actually see a pathway where this three-toed dinosaur walked across this sandbar. Here you can see the trace of a trilobite. This actually is a negative image of the actual trace. What this is is the sediment that filled in on top of the small grooves that were carved by the trilobite walking across the surface. This material was later lithified, and here we see a negative image of the trace. Trace fossils can be more than just footprints. In this case, here we see a trace fossil of a worm burrow, where a worm-like organism has burrowed through the sediment, which was later preserved, and their home, or in this case their burrow, was left behind as a trace fossil. Trace fossils are often found in association with other sedimentary structures, such as the case here, where you can see a fossil trackway along with ripple marks. In this mini lecture, we examine the different types of sedimentary structures and the way that they form, in addition to the different types of fossils. This now ends this mini lecture.